Hi third graders, my name is Miss Nath and I teach third grade at Highland Park Elementary in West Seattle. I'm excited to be reading with you today. We're going to be doing a making meaning lesson, determining important ideas. The text we will be using is Pushing Up the Sky, Possum's Tail, and this is day one. To get ready for this lesson, let's just review what we're going to be doing today and the things that you will need. In this lesson, we will hear and discuss a play, use wondering and questioning to make sense of that play. For this lesson, you will need your packet from this week if you have it. And or your Making Meaning Student Response Book, if you have that. And if you don't have either of those, that's okay. You can still follow along in this lesson. You will also need a turn and talk partner. That can be someone in your home. It can be a stuffed animal. And remember that when it is time to turn and talk, you can use the language you are most comfortable using at home to share with your partner your thinking. Okay, let's get started. So a little review. In the past weeks, you've been working on determining important ideas and themes in fiction and nonfiction text. You've read Fables by Arnold Lobel. You've read Lifetimes by David Rice. And you have read different text texts from the Making Meaning response book. Now, I want to remind you from last week that a fable is a story with animal characters and it teaches the reader a lesson. This week, we're going to hear and read another story with animal characters that also teaches a lesson, but this story is told in a very different way. So the text that we are reading today is from the book Pushing Up the Sky. And this is a book compiled of seven Native American plays that were written by Joseph Bruchak, illustrated by Teresa Flavin, and published by Penguin Random House Publishing. When I say compiled, I mean that uh, Joseph Bruchak took play, uh, stories from Native American groups and turned them into play format. And we're going to talk a little more about what that means in a moment. Joseph Bruchak is a Native storyteller and a member of the Abenaki tribe. At the beginning of each play in his book, he shares a little history of the tribe where the story came from. So the story that we're reading today called Possum's Tale is originally from the Cherokee tribe. The Cherokee people originally lived in the area now known as the states of Georgia, Tennessee, and North Carolina. Because they adapted so quickly to the European way of life, they became known as one of the civilized tribes. However, long before the coming of Europeans, they had a sophisticated form of government and lived in large, well-organized villages. In the early 1800s, many Cherokee people were forced to leave their homes and move to Indian Territory by traveling the infamous Trail of Tears. Today, Cherokee people live all over the United States, but their two contemporary tribal governments are in Oklahoma and North Carolina. Wiley Wright's Wise Rabbit is still their favorite trickster character. Now, it's important to remember this history before we can dive into the story that we're going to be reading today. 
all over the United States, there were native groups that were forced to leave their homes, even though they were the first people on the land. And it's important to acknowledge that that happened and acknowledge the land that we are on today was originally the land of native groups before us. So I want to take a moment to acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the first people of Seattle. The Coast Salish tribes, including the Duwamish people, past and present, and honor with gratitude the land itself and the Duwamish tribe. If you have the resources at home, I would really suggest looking up more of the history of the Duwamish people. I think that would be a really great thing to do. Okay, so let's dive into the story. First, if you have your student response book, turn to page 73. If you have your school packet, find the text Possum's Tail in your school packet. And when you get there, I just want you to take a look over the text. And think to yourself, what do you notice about how the play is written? And how does the play look different from other stories that you've read? In the past, when I've done this in my class, I've had students point out that there are descriptions of the setting in the props and scenery and descriptions of the characters in the costume section, when usually that might be put into the story throughout the story as you read other books. I've also had students notice that there are the characters' names and the dialogue, the words that they're saying. Okay. I want us to take a moment to look here at the very top of the second page. It says scene one. In plays, Sections of the play is separated into scenes, kind of like chapters in a book. Okay. Next, the italicized words are the stage directions. This tells the actors or the readers of the play how to move around as they're performing. Here's another example. Possum enters and walks over to the other animals holding his long tail in front of him. Next, the characters' names are in bold and next to that it says the dialogue, what they would say in the play. Okay, so let's go to page 73 in your student response journal or in your school packet. You'll find the text. I want you to follow along as I read. And remember that good readers ask questions as they read to help themselves better understand the text. So while we're reading together, I will stop and have us think of questions that we might have. Okay, here we go. Characters. Narrator, bear, rabbit, turtle, raccoon, possum, otter, cricket. Make sure you're following along in the text if you have it. 
Note, if more children wish to take part in the play, other animals, such as deer, owl, chipmunk, squirrel, beaver, or fox, can be represented as non-speaking parts. Props and scenery. A forest can be suggested by painting backdrop or potted plants. A bandage is needed for possum's tail. Medicine bottle or bowl is also needed for possum's tail. The oak tree for scene three can be painted on a backdrop. Costumes. Narrator wears a turban made of patterned cloth. A turban is a long piece of cloth wrapped around someone's head. So narrator wears a turban made of patterned cloth. Animal roles can be represented by masks made from paper plates, decorated with markers, yarn, yarn cotton balls, beads, etc. The masks can be held in, by hand in front of the wearer's face or mounted on a handle like a fan. Possum's furry tail can be made of dark socks stuffed with, a co stuffed with cotton and stitched together. Possum's rat tail for scene three can be a long piece of rope. It's interesting that this comes before we read the play because I'm already picturing what the characters look like before I get started on reading the story. Scene one, the forest. A group of animals stands together. Narrator. Long ago, Possum had the most beautiful tail in all of all of the animals. Everyone knew that was true. And if anyone didn't know, then Possum would tell them so. Bear. Tomorrow, we will have a big meeting. Rabbit, you be the messenger. Go tell all the animals. We will meet at the big oak tree when Grandmother Sun rises up into the sky. Rabbit, what will, be, what will the meeting be about? Bear, we will decide that tomorrow. Turtle, uh-oh, here comes Possum. Raccoon, he is going to brag about his tail again, I can tell. Possum enters and walks over to the other animals, holding his long tail in front of him. Possum, see yo, hello, this, is, this day is beautiful and so is my tail. Look at my beautiful tail. Other animals, see yo, Possum. Possum, did you say there would be a meeting tomorrow? Bear. Yes. Then should I speak at the meeting? Why? Turtle, don't ask him. He'll just talk about his. Because of my beautiful tail. It is the most beautiful of all. It is not short like Bear's tail. It is long and silky. It is not stiff like Raccoon's tail. It is soft and lovely. It is not stubby like rabbit's tail. It is big and fluffy and big. It is not ugly like turtle's tail. It is pretty and nice. Possum can continue to improvise while bear and rabbit speak, saying, isn't it beautiful, etc. Improvise means to make something up as you go. So if you were this character, you'd be making up more things about your beautiful possum tail. Possum can continue to improvise while bear and rabbit speak. As possum goes on talking, the other animals yawn and roll their eyes. One by one, they fall to the ground and pretend to sleep. During this activity, rabbit taps bear on the shoulder and rabbit and bear step toward the audience. Possum does not notice, but keeps talking. I have an idea about possum. We should stuff moss into our ears so we cannot hear him. 
No, I have a better idea than that. Let me whisper it to you. Rabbit whispers into Bear's ear. Bear smiles and nods. That is a good idea. Bear and Rabbit turn toward Possum, who is still talking. The other animals are still pretending to sleep, but Possum doesn't notice. Possum, you do have a beautiful tail. Yes, that is true. Shall I tell you about it? No, I mean, not now. We have decided that you should be the first speaker at the big meeting tomorrow. Of course, that is true. The one with the most beautiful tail should always speak first. Possum, your tail should look its best for the meeting. Of course, that is true. My tail should look its best. I will take you to Cricket. He will put some special medicine on your tail. Then your tail will be ready for the meeting. Of course, that is true. Let us go to Cricket. Possum and Rabbit go off stage together. The other animals open their eyes and sit up. Oh no! If Possum's tail is made more beautiful, he'll never stop talking. Otter is right. We'll have to move away to escape his bragging. Don't worry. Rabbit has a plan. This is the end of scene one. Let's take a moment to think. What happened in the scene you just heard? Now this is the time that if you have a turn and talk partner next to you, you can share with them what happened in the scene you just heard. If you do not have a person next to you, you can tell your stuffed animal, you can tell your pets, you can tell me. Okay. What questions do you have about what you just heard? Continue reading scene two, thinking about the same questions that are on the screen. Scene two, another part of the forest. Cricket crouches on the ground. Cricket, I want you to put some of your special medicine on Possum's tail. Yes, that is true. I want my tail to look even more beautiful. What do you mean, my special medicine? Yes, I mean your special medicine. Hurry up, I want you to fix my tail. I will fix it. Cricket pretends to apply medicine to Possum's tail from either a bottle or a bowl. This medicine will make your tail look as it has never looked before. Mm -mm. Will everyone notice it? Oh yes, everyone will notice it. Cricket wraps a bandage around Possum's tail. Now you must keep this old snake skin wrapped around your tail all night. Do not take it off until you are at the meeting. What happened in the scene you just heard? Share with your partner. And what questions do you have about what you just heard? Okay, scene three. Let's see if some of these questions are answered. 
The forest near the big oak tree. All the animals gathered in a semicircle. Semicircle is like a half circle. All the animals gathered in a semicircle. Possum's tail is still wrapped in the snakeskin. Possum will open our meeting. Everyone pay attention. See you, everyone. I have been asked to speak today because of my tail. It is the most beautiful of all. Here, let me show you how beautiful it is. Possum unwraps his tail. It now looks like a big rat's tail, but Possum does not notice. Look at Possum's tail! Still showing off the tail without looking at it. Yes, look at my tail. Look at how beautiful it is. It has no hair at all. It is really ugly. It is funny looking. The animals begin to laugh. Possum looks at his tail and sees that it has no hair. My tail, Cricket, has ruined it. Possum sits down on the ground, closes his eyes, then rolls onto his back with his feet in the air. He stays there until all the other animals have gone. Then he gets up and runs away. So it is that Possum now has the ugliest tail of all the animals. Ever since that time, whenever Possum meets another animal, he closes his eyes, rolls over on his back, and pretends to be dead until all the other animals go away. And Possum no longer brags about his tail. Again, think to yourself first, what has happened in the scene you just heard? Go ahead and share with your partner. And what questions do you have about what you just heard? So throughout the play, we asked and stopped and asked these questions. What happens in the play and what questions did you have as you listened to the play? Then we're going to think now again of what happens in the play. Think to yourself. Share with your partner. A student might say, in this play, Possum is tricked into putting something on his tail that changes his tail. And the animals are doing this because they do not like him. What questions did you have as you listened to the play? Were those questions answered? Go ahead and share with your partner if you haven't already. After scene one, I had a question about what rabbit and bear were whispering to each other. And that was answered because in the next scene, they tell him to go to Cricket. So that's that must be what they were whispering about. They had planned it. So my question was answered. I wonder if yours was. Tomorrow, or the next lesson, 
In the next lesson, we're going to read the play again and listen for answers to the questions that you still might have. Your IDR task today, as you are reading your own books, notice what questions come to mind. Then think, is your question answered directly right there? Indirectly, like an inference you have to make, or not at all? And if you continue to get in the habit of doing this as you are reading, it's going to help you to engage yourself in the book and better understand what you're reading. Thank you for reading with me today, third graders, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.